Assalamu alaikum. Apologies, we are a little bit late today. Very we, late, actually. We're we, supposed to be at 11 o'clock. Yes, we were. So I put up another poster. I hope you have seen it. And thank you for being with us today. Um, we have just been trying to catch ourselves in Ramadan. We just don't know whether we are coming or going. Um, an emergency evening event has been put into my diary this morning, so that's why we couldn't attend. So we thought we'd rather do it this afternoon. So welcome to the show again. It's Sunday afternoon. It's beautiful. It's sunny in London where we are. I hope you are having a good weather as well, wherever you are, and your fast is going well. I don't think they're at home watching us. I think they're outside in the park. Probably, a good time. probably. But you can always catch up with us because if you're in the States, then it's on our um, pages. I hope the give us a thumbs up if the sound is good. Um, we haven't taste, uh, tested them, so I hope it works. Um, and we are just trying to literally catching our breath. Um, I have been on Zoom since 10 o'clock this morning. I only just jumped off, so I'm a little bit Zoomed out. Um, but I hope, um, inshallah, we will give you some good conversation today, as which is our intention every week, um, to come and talk about marriage and have mature conversations about relationship within our communities and how we can help and support each other to have um, more confident Muslim families. So that's what, what we do at Barefoot. While you're doing that, uh, just people are th probably thinking, what on earth is he doing? Well, I'm trying to fix our logo. Where yeah, should the logo go? It's a bit big. <laughs> it's, it's very big, but I'm trying to make it small. You know, brothers and sisters, technical is not my uh, forte. I'm forced into it um, because I have to learn it, but I'm, I think I'm doing okay. We need to employ somebody to do this for us now. Would you like to be, would you like a job with Barefoot Institute? Actually, this is a serious offer. If somebody knows how to organize things, somebody who knows how to develop things, um, you can uh, uh, get in touch with us. We're looking for a good organizer, good developer. When I say uh, developer, I don't mean IT developer. I'm talking about program, courses, things that you can develop with us. We have the content. It's all in our brain, in our writings. We just need somebody to come and become our manager, somebody who can do things together. And we're happy to pay you. Yeah, of course, of course. We'll need someone with um, producing programs like this so we can actually come up with a lot more content, a lot more exciting conversations. We are just doing it in our own time at the moment. We enjoy having these conversations. It's helping us to restructure our thinking about what we go through. And it seems like people are enjoying it too. So hopefully you will be able to give us some ideas and some support and some help. So today we have a really exciting topic as usual. We're it's called about forgiveness. Forgiveness in relationships. And somebody made a comment on the poster when I put it up, is that women apparently are more forgiving than men. So that was the starting point. Depends on which woman you're talking about. Some women are more forgiving, mm. but some men are more forgiving. It's, it's not based on gender. I think forgiveness as a concept has to be learnt and practised and not just dreamt about. Most of us think we're very forgiving. We think we are. We think we are. But I don't think we are. We are very vindictive. We hold grudges. We carry um, every incident in a memory bank of our own that not only drives our emotion but our actions. Mm. So I don't think we're very forgiving. I think we're very brutal when it comes to our relationship. When it comes to each other, we're very brutal. And when it comes to expressing ourselves with one another, we are also very brutal. So I think we're not very forgiving people. We should be. What we want to talk about today is how do we translate that aspiration to reality? Well, this is the month of forgiveness, right? So this is one of the aspects of Ramadan that we, we um, often talk about. Uh, we talked about compassion last week, um, and we wanted to continue along the same lines of another element of relationship, which is forgiveness, and just really unpack the whole process of what what is the meaning of forgiveness and why is it so difficult for some people why it goes it comes easier for others um, what is the psychology of forgiveness um, what is the impact and how can we become a little bit more I would call emotionally fluent when it comes to emotions um, about forgiveness I don't think we are <coughs> talking about forgiveness from Allah uh, we are not actually our program is not about asking Allah to forgive us that in itself will be a separate program. But we're talking about forgiveness between humans in a relationship. So husband and wife, parents, brothers, sisters, and anyone else who are involved in it, in-laws and so on. We have a whole array of relationships that we need to look at and manage. Nobody's online? Not yet. I don't, can't see anyone. 
people are watching, I can see. If you are watching our program and if you know who we are, um, you know that we do this every Sunday. We try. We have not been as regular in the month of Ramadan, primarily because Ramadan timetable can be quite erratic. We try our best to keep consistent with it, but we couldn't. So we are now here to ask you um, to join us. And if you have, if you can see us, say hello. Salaamu Alaikum would be nice. No comments on the, on, the, on the screen yet. So looking for our people out there, what do you think about forgiveness? Is there anyone you cannot forgive? Is there anyone in your relationship that you would like to seek forgiveness from that you've wronged, maybe? Or somebody who has wronged you and you're waiting for them to come and say, I'm sorry, forgive me. You're holding on to that thought or that hope. Is there anyone in your life that you would like to forgive? Or you would want uh, to seek forgiveness from? What do you think? Well, I, I think it's, it's the first step is to recognizing the, the need for forgiveness. Because I think the whole point, usually where we get to, um, is that we don't understand. We, we think someone has wronged us. Therefore, that's the person who needs to forgive. Or, and, and, and there has to be a way. There's always another way. We, we look at um, ourselves as being wronged. Therefore, I have the right to be correcting the other person because they have done something wrong. So rather than going into a full-blown attack of, oh, this is what you did to me and this is how it is and this is why you should be punished for your behavior, that there must be another way. And this is where forgiveness comes into the picture. This is where forgiveness becomes a really important um, is there is there anyone that you can is there anyone you can think of who you need to ask for forgiveness from? Yes. Oh yeah, I have. <laughs> I Go have. On, <laughs> well, I was reading a very interesting book. I am reading a very interesting book about spiritual development because uh, that's that's what my favorite topic is. Um, and what they call this, um, what I was reading recently, is that we all have um, a list of people who we put in a dungeon. And these are the people that we either we don't want to look at, we don't want to deal with because it's either too painful or something really big happened or it happened such a long time ago that there is, oh, there's nothing I can do now. But we actually keep these people in the dungeon. And what it means is that just by them being in the dungeon, we are not free from, we don't understand the concept. That relationship isn't, there's, there was no closure. There was no understanding of that relationship. I have... Probably, I would say maybe about six, seven people in there. Both. Six, seven people that you would like to ask for forgiveness. Well, also that I need to think about why I find it so difficult that I can't forgive them. Because I, I think it goes two ways. It's one so is that these when are people, you ask... These are people you can't forgive. I'm trying to understand. Yes. These are the people who I'm finding very difficult to forgive. I can't seem to pass um, a threshold of forgiveness. Okay. Are there any people in your life who you can't forgive? Are there people in your life who you would like to seek forgiveness from? I've got Shahina Chowdhury who says, Salaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Salaam, Shahina, for joining us. And thank you for sending Salaam. What about the rest of you? Are you there? It's month of Ramadan, most likely. People are people probably out. Or just chilling at home, hardly want to watch a, TV, watch a, watch a uh, program on their uh, phone or a laptop. Join us, inshallah. Talk to us about forgiveness. Is there anybody in your life that you can't forgive or you're finding it difficult to ask forgiveness from? It's two ways. I'm thinking about, is there anyone in my life that I would like to seek forgiveness from? Hmm. Good question. Is it maybe easier to think about who you need to forgive? Because you know that there was something wrong that was done to you. And I think it's, it's easier for yeah, us to well, think it that is. way. Yeah, well, it is. But because are... when you think about who you need to ask forgiveness from, then you're admitting that you have done something. And I have a long list of people that too. So. I don't know um, if there... So there are a few people that I can't forgive. I find it very difficult to forgive. Salam, Shireen. Thank you for... Wa alaikum salam, Shireen. Welcome. Thank you very much. So uh, there are people who I find difficult in forgiving. A number of people. Mm. Probably about three or four people. Out of three or four people, two of them are tangible. Something concrete that happened to you? And yeah, and they're still around. I know where they are. I know they are alive. Mm -hmm. I know they live. I know they have a family. I know that they, are ex they exist. Mm -hmm. These are the people. That, these are the people I find difficulty in forgiving, because of what they've done to me. Now, will I be able to forgive them? I would love to get to that point of forgiveness, but for me to forgive them, I need to reconcile with them, and for me to reconcile with them, I need to address the issue. Hmm. I need to go to them and I need to really challenge them. I need to sit with them and unpack the issue. Otherwise, I can't forgive them. Hmm. Um, Shahina Chadri says, "What advice do you have for someone who finds it difficult to forgive someone?" 
or some people are talking exactly that, Shahina. Yeah, so we are just unpacking it exactly. Yeah. Like. I, I'm finding it very difficult to forgive these people because I think I would never be able to forgive them for what they did to me unless I sit with them. What would that do if you sit with them? I'll put the record straight. Mm. I'd like them to know the impact of what they've done to me. I'd like them to know that their behavior or the, what they did to me has had a long-term consequences and has had long-term consequences in my life. And what would that achieve? That would achieve a closure. Right. They, you see, you can't ignore. That's the point. Mm. If you have a problem, if you have got an issue de to deal with, you can't ignore the issue. If somebody is suggesting that you should ignore the issue, that's a problem. I would like to sit with those people and say to them, you did one, two, three, four to me. The impact of what you did, one, two, three, four on me. I want you to know this is what you did. I want you to recognize with what you've done. I want you to take a responsibility for what you've done. I want you to understand that it has absolutely had an impact on me. And then if you ask me for forgiveness, I'll consider it. Well, this is very, it's conditional though. It has to be conditional because this is something that they've done. So you are forgiving based on a condition that they need to know exactly what they yes, did I'll, and the impact. Hmm. And then what? Then I will forgive them. There could be a resolution in between, but I will forgive them. Yeah. I won't hold it against Conditionally. Them. Of course. It's the same with Allah. If you don't ask Allah, Allah doesn't forgive you. Mm. Remember this. If you want Allah's forgiveness, you have to ask Allah for forgiveness. You sit here, you do all the sins against Allah, you think Allah will just forgive you, like, just like that. Okay, that's fine. So when you sit with these people mm -hmm. and you tell them the impact, what if they don't realize it, then they will not ask your forgiveness then that's, because they that, don't realize Then it. I will leave it with them. Say, look, I have given you what I needed to give you. When you have thought about it, process it in your head, and you're ready to ask for forgiveness, come and talk to me. This is my number. This is where I live. Come and talk to me. Until then, you should know that I'm holding this on your record. On the Day of Judgment, if you haven't asked me for forgiveness on this earth, you will be questioned about it. Right. Because it's grave. Mm. It's what they've done. It's so grave that they need to be held accountable for. And I'm not willing to just forgive them for the sake of it. Mm. Because that to me is artificial. That's fake. Oh, I forgive you. Don't worry. That's not true. You don't forgive me. Shahina said the impact is often not just on one person but also on a whole generation of families and more. Yes, absolutely true. Shahina, we are with you on this one. If you've done something that is so grave and so heinous and you don't understand the impact, then why should I forgive you? Because you'll do it again. So here is, here is, a, here is what I'm thinking about. While I hear this, that it's, it, I think it goes in the way when we make a mistake and we recognize it and then we ask for forgiveness. But th the condition is that the people that you are holding hostage or they are holding you hostage because you haven't forgiven them is the condition is that they need to recognize it now the, the problem we have with this one i believe is that very often we do things as well that we don't recognize that that uh, that is a violation on someone what you know whichever way and if we don't realize and recognize it how could i ask someone else to realize that somebody said exactly that he she might have a different reason for yeah. what they've done to you yeah. but there are certain things there are no reason to there are no reasons. For example... I think for everything there's a reason. No, for example... Yeah, okay, but there is no... no for example, I have, we have a case of a woman who has been abused by somebody, mm. physically abused by somebody. Right. What reason could that person give for physically abusing that woman? All sorts of reasons. Such as a young girl at your custody, you abuse her. Yeah, psychological disturbance. On, the, on your part. On the part of the person who has done it. Of course, there are reasons. No, but what I'm saying is any reasons that you give doesn't explain your behavior because it's done on me. The impact is on me. Whatever you've gone through, that's your problem. Why inflict it on me? Mm. No reason will ever explain or take away the impact it has on me. Um, Khairul Islam, that is why both must have a dialogue to make closure on the issue. Yes, of course, mm. both of them have to have dialogue. But I think we can't run away from the, tr the, the reality here. And that is, if you have done something to me, mm. even if you have a reason, the impact on me is still there. So while in, in, in theory I understand it, but we also need to look at another issue here, is that somebody might have, have a might have a reason to do something, but the reason can be intentional or it can be unintentional. Okay, let's explain that a bit more. So I, I might hurt somebody with my words. Mm -hmm. Because this is the way I speak. And if someone doesn't like the way I speak, they get hurt and then I have to ask for forgiveness. Well, I, I think I fall into that category because I'm very forthright, I'm very loud, 
I'm very argumentative. I'm when I'm debating, I can be very strong. So I understand people get upset about it. That's unintentional. Yeah. So I, even within that c- category of people, when they cause or they inflict something on us, one could be an intentional, but the other one could be, you know, for example, in the case of abuse, the actual act was it was premeditated. It was thought about, it was planned, and it was done with the consciousness. But what if it was done at a state where the person was unconscious? Impossible. I do not accept that for a second, because then you're condoning abuse. Whoever has I'm, not con- I'm not condoning yeah, but abuse. But what I'm saying yeah. is that whoever has done it, there is no state of mind that will allow a person to plan, to execute, to abuse, to do all that unconsciously. Impossible. You're talking about abusing somebody physically or emotionally or sexually. These are acts that have to be done premeditated. No, oh, I understand that. But, some, so, you know, when we, when we look at some court cases, some of these things, they can prove that at the end, when well, they was all thought about, diminished premeditated. Respons- d- diminished responsibility is what you're referring to legally. Yes, absolutely. So the, but this is only applicable if this person had lost the capacity to rationalize. In the, the moment when the correct. act was happening. So their mind went. So if somebody is abusing somebody, what would it be that has taken away that mind of theirs? They were able to do the act, but they couldn't think about it? Mm. No, I understand the logic, but I, I want to highlight that it's, it, it could be killing. It could be any other crime that people commit. And let's face that, you know, we have some of the people, the hardest that we need to forgive is, is, is these are the really big crimes. We are not talking about someone using bad language for, no, about you. We are talking about really serious issues. So, abuse. For example, sexual abuse is a major one. Absolutely. Um, These have, obviously, serious consequences on the life of the person who has been at the receiving end. Khalid uh, Simon has said, Assalamu alaikum, my dear Sheikh, how can I build very strong relationship with my partner? She is a school teacher in a particular area in East London, and I'm studying at university, so we're very tight schedule. With uh, this busy life, it's difficult to manage everything nicely. Ah, I understand. Mm. You have to schedule nice time then. Literally, put it in your diary, Monday, sorry, Sunday between 9 and 11, I'll give quality time to my wife. Um, Tuesday, one hour I'll give. Uh, Thursday, I'll give one hour. Schedule it. If you're very busy, be realistic about it. Don't be romantic about it. Put it in your diary so that you can, otherwise you'll become a point of resentment and then we'll be talking about forgiveness all over again. Mm. So that's a quick advice to you. Shireen Malik has written here, but what if you can't go through the whole a rigmarole of going through what they did to you if their understanding is not to the level which they would understand i.e. they're an elderly person person would it be sufficient that I just clear my heart and say I forgive them it's your choice it's entirely your choice if you say this person has gone beyond the point of uh, reproach I can't really make sense to them I can't sit down and put them right, I can't get them to take responsibility, I cannot have a resolution, you can choose. Remember, forgiveness does not mean they will get away scot-free on the Day of Judgment. It doesn't mean that. Hmm. So this elderly person, you say, I'm forgiving you, I'm forgiving you, but I'm not letting you off the hook. You murdered my son. There is a story. A Muslim father had his son was was murdered in America um, and the murderer in the court was sentenced to 23 years in life imprisonment without parole. The father got up, went to the murderer and said, I forgive you for what you've done to my son. Gave him a hug. But the sentencing wasn't reduced. He will still serve 26 years. The father feels liberated, he's forgiven him. So, yes, you may say, I'm forgiving this person, I'm cleaning my heart, I understand this person is beyond anything, I leave it to Allah to decide what to do. That could be a way of forgiveness. Well, I, that's exactly what I was referring to, is that I was having this argument with my mother and I was finding it very difficult to, you know, some of you who are watch, with me watching us, um, I was finding it very difficult to forgive for something that she has chosen to do. And through very, very long, hard work, I'm beginning to understand. And I think this is what really the whole therapeutic process is about. It's, you go to therapy, you go for counselling, because you need to understand this. is just because you forgive, it doesn't mean that you have forgotten what was done. And that's really, for me, it's a very important point, is that I forgive not because I want to hold somebody still in the kind of grasp of me that, oh, you know, I have a power over you. No, 
I forgive because it's an important part of my process, but it doesn't mean that I am okay with what you have done. Yes, that's correct. So and I think it's really important that we, we don't just forgive and, and we go back to as if everything was normal. No, next time you have an opportunity to talk about this, I don't agree with what you did, but I have forgiven you because there's no point of laboring over it. I wrote about this and I'm going to find my particular piece of writing. But if you want to read Shahina's point... Um, Shahina said, but how is one going to know about the intentions of the parties concerned if they do not talk to one another? Communication is vital, but only kind and amicable communication will lead to closures. Yes, absolutely. And you see, conversations here are really important. This is where we get into the idea that these are very uncomfortable conversations, but these are real honest conversations. And this is one of the things that we believe at Barefoot is that the only way you will have meaningful relationships is when you have honest conversations with each other. So when, you, when something is bothering you, when something is not clear, when something needs forgiveness, when something needs to be discussed, go and have those uncomfortable uh, conversations. And there's something really amazing about uncomfortable um, conversations. A conversation is uncomfortable because it hits us in a very visceral level. You know, when someone, someone says something that you don't like or someone says, oh, I am upset with you because of X, Y, and Z, or I'm angry with you because this is what you did. It hits you in a visceral level. So you start feeling anxiety, your hand is sweating, and, and you go into defensive mode. And this is literally, I was reading um, one of my favorite uh, writers, and she said, life is forgiveness school. That life is always going to be presenting you these kind of arguments. People will come who will disagree. People will come who will say bad things about you. People will come who will say what they don't like about you. But this is the moment when you actually understand that I don't need to pick up the discomfort. I need to understand why they say what they say. I don't need to agree with them. But I need to separate the opinion from the person. Um, I wrote about this. Can you forgive is the question. So, sorry, actually. Um, so what is forgiveness and what is not forgiveness? Forgiveness is an intentional and voluntary process by which you actually engage from your mind and say, I'm going to forgive this person. However, forgiveness is not glossing over or deny what happened. Yeah. So it's very it's important. It's truth-telling. Co um, forgiveness is a conscious and a deliberate effort. It is not to deny the seriousness of what happened. Forgiveness is a change in feeling and attitude towards the offence. It is not to forget what happened. Forgiveness is to overcome the desire for vengeance. It is not to condone it. It's very important to recognise this. Forgiveness is to overcome the feeling of resentment. And it is not to offer excuses for the offence. Forgiveness is an opportunity for the victim to find peace. Forgiveness is not an offer for reconciliation on its own. Forgiveness is a gateway to freedom from painful memory. Forgiveness does not absorb the perpetrator of their crime completely. Forgiveness is a liberator from the corrosive impact of anger. Forgiveness is not an offer to cancel their legal responsibility. Forgiveness will let go of the dominating negative feelings. Forgiveness does not mean you have to interact with them and build an intimate relationship with them anymore. Forgiveness means to feel empowered, to recognize that the pain that you suffered and you are prepared to let go. And it is a moment for you to heal, to move on. So when I talk about forgiveness, I want to share with you the story of the Prophet. When he came to Mecca, hmm. after liberating Mecca, he saw Hind and Wahshi. Hind was the lady, Abu Sufyan's wife, who had ordered the execution and mutilation of Prophet's dear uncle Hamza. And Wahshi was the one who killed Hamza and mutilated the body of Hamza. After liberation of Mecca, both of them became Muslim. When a person says, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, according to the saying, their sins are forgiven. They have got a clean slate. Hmm. So Prophet Sallallahu cannot now hold them in contempt for the sins that they've committed. Allah has forgiven them. Right. So what did Prophet say? So he said, Wahshi and Hind, Allah, may Allah forgive you. I make dua that Allah forgives you. I forgive you too. But please don't come in front of me. Stay away from my sight, because every time I see you, 
the pain of my uncle and the process by which he died, the way you killed him, the brutality that you perpetrated against him, overwhelms me and I feel very pained by it. So don't come in front of me, but I have forgiven you and I'm the Prophet of Allah, I'm making dua that may Allah forgive you too. Well, that's integrity, right? Yes. So, so that's when you can say, I have forgiven you, but please don't come in front of me because you have hurt me so much. Yes. But I think what we do in, in especially recent times, and um, it's a really interesting um, concept for me because we get into this tangle of not forgiving for such little things. Not, not something like someone kills my mother, God forbid, or something really bad would happen to my family. But with, with tiny little things, we get into the he tangle. Parked, he, he, he parked on my drive. My neighbor parked on my drive. I have blocked my way. I've got a case like this. My neighbor parked on my drive. Right. That I have not spoken to my neighbor for now two week, uh, two months because I'm so angry with him. Right. A little thing. Small things. But I think it's I you know it's it's one of those things that we get offended oh, so the quickly. Oh, the other one. I wasn't invited to my niece's wedding. Somebody said to me a few days ago, but how could you be invited to the wedding? It's COVID time. Well, I wasn't invited. So what do you mean? Well, at least they should have invited me. And I would say no. I would have said no. <laughs> and I said, and you're upset? Yes, I don't want to talk to them. Hmm. That trivial issue, that's so small and you hold on to it. That's another issue. I, I think the real, the main issue here is to recognize, first of all, what is the matter that is worthy of forgiveness? If or holding a, on. Or holding on. If it's a trivial issue, you know, we don't have time. We have such limited time to deal with this. Like the other day we were, when the shops were open, and I, I, I share this because I think it's so telling. We were standing in a shop uh, when they opened up for a very short period of time to get some trousers for the kids. And I told the kids to stay in the line. I'm going to go and pick up another couple of pieces. And when I came back, one of the ladies went in front of my daughter. And I said, I went to her and I said, oh, I'm really sorry my daughter was in the line. And she said, oh, right, all right, don't get so offended. I said, I don't get offended at all. I just want my space. And then, you know, how little we get triggered by tiny things. And I think it's actually to do with social media because we are trigger happy. We don't think about carefully what, what, is, what is really important to get worried about or worked up about. That line is not worried about worrying about, but what it does to our brain is that we just make it bigger and bigger, and suddenly we are not forgiving from the tiniest thing to our neighbor. Prophet Sallallahu was in, in Taif, mm. and people of Taif pelted him with stones. Mm. His head was cut, blood came out from his head all the way to his toe. His slippers, plastic slippers or whatever he was wearing, got stuck to his feet because Probably of blood. Probably not plastic, but... Whatever they were wearing, but it got stuck to his feet because of his blood being dry. Mm. He was so profusely hurt and so badly injured. Uh, Zaid bin Haritha, who was with him, hurried him to a date garden and took shelter. Angel of mountains were sent down to destroy the people of Taif. And Prophet Sallallahu made a dua against the people of Taif. Mm. Guess what dua was? Let me read it to you. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, O you, my Lord, I complain you to you of my weakness. Lack of support and humiliation I am made to receive. Most compassionate, most merciful. You're the Lord of the weak. And you're my Lord. To whom do you lead me? To a distant person who receives me with hostility? Or to an enemy you have given power over me? As long as you are not displeased with me, I do not care what I face. I would, however, be much happier with your mercy. I seek refuge in the light of your face by which all darknesses is displaced. And both this life and the life to come are put in the right course against incurring your wrath or being the subject of your anger. Mm. Until I earn, to you I submit, until I earn your pleasure. Everything is powerless without your support. Mm. And he said to the angel, don't kill these people, don't punish them. I make dua that their children will become Muslim one day. Can you imagine not being able to forgive after such an experience? Can you actually can you imagine forgiving a people who had stoned you, spelted you, kicked you out? The prophet did. Hmm. He did not complain about the people. So actually, brothers and sisters, prioritize in who you forgive and who you don't forgive, yes, but get it right. Hmm. Don't hold on to small things because we don't have the time, like you said. No, we don't have the time to, to think about trivial things. We need to really weigh out that there are some things that are absolutely worthy of conversations and we have to have those conversations. And there are crimes that are not forgivable. Yes, I know. Absolutely. I understand that. But which 
crime are they? Please tell me a crime that is not forgivable. If Allah can forgive everything, mm. He says He will forgive you all your sins as long as you ask Allah to forgive you. Actually, literally He says, Surely Allah will forgive you all your sins. If Allah forgives all our sins, what human crime can we not forget? Forgive. I know I said I can't forgive a couple of people because of what they've done. I know that. I w I'm prepared to forgive them if they're prepared to engage with me. Hmm. If they don't engage with me, what do I do next? I, I think that's why I wanted to ask you because, you know, maybe sometimes we don't get the opportunity to have these conversations. Somebody might pass away and what do you do? I, I had a very difficult relationship with my father. In his lifetime, I could never forgive him. And when he passed away, it was too late for me to have any of those conversations with him. So what do I do? Do I carry the idea? Which is why I think it's important to, to say that sometimes, well, from, from my understanding, forgiveness isn't dependent on the other person. Forgiveness is dependent on us. And whether you call it letting go or you are calling it whatever you are calling it, But sometimes we don't get the chance to have those conversations with the people who hurt us so much. Or we want to have the conversations and they say outright, I'm not willing to engage with this or I don't want to talk about this or I will never you know, go back because maybe they feel so ashamed of what they have done that they will never sit down at the same table with you and talk about what they, what they, can't, hear, is, what they can't hear what they have done to you. Well, there is a way. If they're alive, write them a letter. But they still may not engage with That's you. That's fine. Write them a letter. Let them know what's going on. Let them find out what's going on. Okay. And they might just go silent for the rest of your yeah. lives. They you can you go still si have to they, forgive. Yeah, they can go silent. You let them know that if you go silent and don't engage with me, Allah will judge you on the day of judgment for your behavior. But I am letting go. Mm. I've let go. It's no longer a pain I carry. I've told you what you did to me. Mm. If you want to engage with me and ask for forgiveness, It could even be a compensation. I'm willing to pay you for the losses that you've had. Mm. Or I'm willing to do something to redeem myself. What can I do? Mm. Yes, if they don't, you should tell them that you should know that I have let go. I don't carry that burden anymore. It's in your shoulder. On the day of judgment, you account for it with Allah and leave it like that. Mm. I say this to people and I'm going to do this with these two people mm. because I, I've been intending to engage with them. I'm going to write them a letter very soon. Did you do the one thing you promised last week? Yes. In public? Mm -hmm. You made a public announcement? Mm -hmm. I did. Okay. And I'm waiting for a response. Don't okay. Um, Khairul Islam says, I said before, what impacts of someone's act have a potential to subjugate an entire community and as a consequence your faith becomes unreasonable to the moral structure, to the moral structure exist around you if, you, if not laughable what then i don't understand it i don't understand uh, Khairul, i don't understand you've complicated it in your way of putting it if you kindly simplify what you're saying i don't understand we don't understand it I, my wife and i we've both read this what about you is there anybody out there that you would like to grab them by their collar not literally and say hey shake them and say, i need to talk to you we need to talk because there is something that is really really bothering me I know you said you've got a long list of people. Not very long, but I've got about six, seven people. That's, in, that's in a long the, list. In the dungeon, because, yeah, I, I, what, I, what I realized is that this is usually the same kind of issue. So there are seven different pre people, but the issues are, at the bottom of it is all the same issue, is that I did not act from integrity when I was with them. So therefore, they went so far that they did something to me that hurt me so much then I just needed to run away and I didn't want to engage with them. So it's, it, it's partially accepting that the reason why they are in the dungeon is because I put them there. I, I do, did not act out of integrity with them. So what are you going to do and now? So when I'm, when, I, I think when we are not acting from integrity, um, what happens to us is we give up on values, we give up on our own um, standing, we give up on the very essence of how Allah has created us. Mm -hmm. And when we don't act on that, people, sometimes I realize, sometimes, sometimes people take advantage not because they are bad people. They take advantage because they can see that they can do it with us. Because they can get away with it. They can get away with it. So I didn't step up, I didn't stand up, and therefore people just carried on doing the same thing over and over again because I didn't stand up. I actually think it's one of my reasons with my mother why she keeps doing the things that is hurting me because I have actually never made it clear to her what hurts me 
or what's not acceptable. And what's not acceptable in my books. And I'm an adult woman now. I can say, look, I, you are my mother. I will never uh, forsake, you know, I will never leave you. But some of these things are not helping me and I am not willing to accept them. So the bottom line is, brothers and sisters, forgiveness, when you do forgive people, it's for you. What does it say? Um, okay, take out, not laughable, but bit. Bit and try answering it. Sorry, I'm sorry, Khairul. You have to write it in proper, uh, shorter sentences. I'm sorry to say we didn't understand any of what you've said. As said before, when impacts of someone's act have a potential to subjugate an entire community, and as a consequence, your faith becomes unreasonable. To the moral structure exist around you. Uh, that we can't we can't put it together. Sorry. So just ask one question. So yeah. Just what, make what it is the very, one question yeah, that we, make, we can make it answer. very simple for Thank us. Thank you. Inshallah, answer it. We want to answer, of course. That's why I've, I've read it so many times. Um, so the, uh, forgiveness is for you. That's the po bottom line. Yes, yes. Because I, I, I was just trying to find out that, you know, there is something about what happens to us in, um, in our brain when it comes to forgiveness. Go on. Um, that we, we have something called um, the neuro... Pathway. I have to talk about the brain because I like the brain so much. But there's something called the neuro uh, pathway and the neu neuroplasticity. So forgiveness is first of all it's a it's it's a behavior that if you realize from the very beginning, and those of you who have children, you know this. Children by nature are forgiving people. So when they are born, there is nothing. You will never see two kids one of them sitting in the corner sulking for two hours or three hours or deciding for two weeks I'm not going to speak to my friend from the nursery because they don't have this part of their nature. What they do is they skip over whatever has happened and then they make up and then they start playing again. Now, Yeah, they forgive very quickly. Very quickly. But what we do with forgiveness is that we start ruminating in our mind and we, we start giving excuses and then we build up a whole different story which gives us the right of, oh, I'm not going to speak to that person. I need to punish that person. So we wire ourselves. We create a pathway for non-forgiveness. And the longer we live, and especially if you live in a family, I lived in a family where forgiveness was not part of our vocabulary. I have never learned what forgiveness is. I was not brought up with religion, so nobody ever drummed it into me that it's an important aspect of it. I've never seen my mother doing it. We never talked about this. So my idea of forgiveness never really came to me consciously for a, you know, a very, very long time. So when I had a disagreement with someone, I just cut them out of my life. And there was no need for me because there was no wiring around forgiveness. So literally forgiveness is, is a, be it's, it's a behavior that we have every control over. Because each time you new, learn a new behavior, you create a new pathway for that behavior. And it takes time because it takes myelination for the neurons to, to create that behavior. And if it's not natural to you, it's absolutely learnable. But think about kids. They are not unforgiving people. No, they're not. All kids. You know, you push them, they fall over as a mate, they get up and they carry on. They fight a bit or they even, you know, physically they become a bit of abusive with each other. But then the next minute they are hugging and laughing Only at each other. Only time when they start behaving differently is when puberty hits them. They start holding grudges. That's true. Yeah, probably around pu puberty. Yeah. Yeah. And, and as they grow older and more and more experience gathers in their head, the more and more they connect different wires and make different stories make different reasons inside their heads to forgive, not to forgive. Well, he meant it, or he or she intended this. All these interpretations begin to influence their right. natural behavior, which is by fitrah, we're forgiving people. By fitrah, we're forgiving. That's very true. But only times we, grudge, we hold grudges if it was so severe. If it's very severe, something that you had experienced when you were a childhood, we can't get, let go, then that childhood uh, memory remains. But with adult, unfortunately, too many memories remain. Mm. And that's what we're trying to re... Uh, uh, we, uh, we're trying to ask you to reboot your brain memory and try and understand that you can actually forgive people. There are certain things you need to do. So first thing first, if there is a, a person that you want to forgive, or if there are people you can't forgive, make a list of a group of people that you can't forgive. And see if you can reach out to those people. Write to them saying, I'm struggling to forgive you because you did this to me. This was the impact, and this is what I want you to do for me to move on. Very simple. If you don't do that, then you haven't done your bit. So that's one part. The other part is, make a list of people that you need to ask to forgive you for bad behavior, things that you've done. 
And the fun part is really when you do this with your spouse. And this is why we say to people, because we are talking about relationship contacts, this is when we say to people, do this once a week, once every couple of days, every time you feel like there is something, do not sit on this, because this is what's going to happen. You don't mention something that you need to forgive. You don't talk about this. So you kind of push it away and you think it's going to go away. Next time, your spouse is going to do it again. Yeah, of course. And then you build up a story. My spouse is a horrible person. He and she does it all the time. And that story just gets perpetuated in your mind. And it, maybe it's nothing to do with the reality of what happened. Maybe it was forgiveness, um, forgetfulness. Maybe it was an unintentional bleed. Whatever. Uh, whatever it, uh, it could have been. But discuss it and deal with it in the moment. Okay, so we're coming to the last 10 minutes of our program. We're going to finish at 4 o'clock because of other commitments that we have. Are there any questions people want to raise with us? Are there any issues that they want to raise with us? I know Khairul Islam has tried. I'm really sorry, Khairul. We have to apologize for not understanding your point. You may want to attempt again. If you don't want to, that's okay too. I understand. Hopefully you'll forgive us for not being able to understand what you're saying. But anybody else has got a point that they want to raise, a question that they want to ask, please go ahead. This is your chance. My question is simple. Is there a list in your mind for people that you need to ask for forgiveness, then call them up. Beautiful time of Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum. It is Ramadan. I need to really take my time out to apologize for a behavior that I displayed to you or did I did something to you. Will you please forgive me? Very simple. That's one thing you can do in the month of Ramadan. And the other list is people that you can't forgive. That's the harder one. Sobi Arana says, Salam, really great discussion. Thank you, Sobi Arana, for joining us. He's always, mashallah, joining all our programs. Alhamdulillah, thank Alhamdulillah. you. Thank you. Is there a question that you have, Sobi Arana? We're talking about forgiveness. Is there somebody in your family, in your friend circle, in your life that you can't forgive? Let's talk about marriage a little bit. How, okay. how do we apply this for couples? What are the practical suggestions that we can give to people about forgiveness? Why, why is forgiveness a really, really important topic when it comes to a marital relationship? Ah, that's a good question. I think it's... I am full of good questions. <laughs> Do you have answers? <laughs> <laughs> the most important relationship in your life after your parents is your wife. After your parents, and I say this very knowingly, Allah has made parent-child relationship sacred. Never compromise on that. Even if your husband says compromise on it, no. Even if your wife says compromise on it, no, really sorry. That's not a command. That's not a request I'm willing to entertain. So most important relationship is your parents. After that is your spouse, of course. Your husband and wife relationship, if you're married, that is. If you're not married, then other people, but marriage. So in that marriage, what grudges are you holding on to? Mm. What is, what problems, no, sorry. What memories are overloading your hard drive? What memories? And what better time to do this than in Ramadan? You know, when you do your reflection, sit down and make a list. It's sometimes just writing it down on its own makes a whole lot of difference. If you see it in front of you, I bet you any money if it was allowed in Islam to bed, that half of it you would just cross off and say, this is so trivial. trivial. I don't even need to think about this. And start sorting out what are the things that are really important to talk about and say, look, this is what has happened and I still haven't quite forgiven you for that or, you know, what is that you can't forgive me? Um, for Sobia what I has done. written, Allah, sorry, if people ask for forgiveness from Allah, Allah will forgive, but you are still hurt. Do you forgive that person? So if somebody has hurt you, we spoke about it, we need to remind them again. Imagine your husband has hurt you, wife has hurt you. You need to tell them that they've hurt you because that's the least they deserve. If you tell them that they've hurt, hurt you, then they have the right to respond. They can either say sorry, try and take responsibility for it, try and ask you to forgive them, Try and mend, do something. But if you do nothing, you hold on to the grudges inside you, then it's only you who is feeling sorry for yourself. Nobody else will. And the other person doesn't know. So tell them, that's the first thing you can do. Mm. Once you have told them, if their attitude is brushing it aside, dismissing you, belittling you, threatening you, becoming abusive, then you walk away. If their attitude is more understanding and empathy, then you know there is a do door opening. You can build and you can take it to the next level. So aim is if somebody is willing to listen to your pain and heart, then they have opened the door. Don't abuse it. Let them know the impact genuinely and kindly and go to the next level. Ask them how will they put it right. 
close that chapter, get forgiveness done, move on. Don't hold on to it because it becomes too weighty at the end of the day. Yeah, we, we just keep, uh, you know, building up stories in our head. And it's, it's, it's really, I think for me, the biggest issue here is that often couples, they fight about the thing. So by the time they get to the counseling room, the forgiveness isn't even the topic because it has become so big. It is, it's bigger than an elephant. They've lost all compassion for there their is, relationship. Yeah, and there's no perspective. Like, what do I actually, what, what are we really not forgiving each other? And if you trace it back, it could be that one of them left the shoes on in the living room and the other one tipped over it. So it, it could be anything. It's sometimes those little things, you know, if you don't understand the context, because it's nothing to do with the shoe, it's to do with being neg negligent or the wife is asking the husband, can you put your shoes away? If he continues, he doesn't put it away. The wife starts building up a story and it all just becomes so messy that it's very, very difficult to untangle. Shahina Chowdhury says, what advice do you have for someone who does not want to engage with a person who wants to sort out an issue with them? Well, advice is very simple. You let them, you tell them how you feel, either by words or in writing and leave it in their court. So if I was writing a letter, I would write, you know, whatever, dear, assalamu alaikum, I'm writing to let you know that your particular behavior or your particular action or at this time in my life has this impact and I'm still living with it. Your consequences are X, Y, and Z. I want you to know the consequences are so deep that I am struggling with it even now. I would like you to do something about it. What are you willing to do about it? And, and say, if I don't hear from you, I will assume that you're not interested in doing anything about it. I will leave it for Allah to deal with it on the Day of Judgment. In the meantime, I've done my bit. I have told you. That's what you have to do. And I guess it's easier to do it with a friend, for example, because you can say, well, I'm, no, I'm no longer willing to be your friend if this is where the situation is. What happens when you're living with somebody who's not engaging? What do you That's do? That's very difficult, isn't it? Then you need to find a therapist, a third party to be involved. Say to your partner, give them an ultimatum. Look, I can't cope with this anymore. We need counselling, we need therapy. Let's get a third party so that we can have a conversation first. We need to sort this out. We can't continue. And if they still don't continue, and you don't see any mileage in this changing, then this marriage is not for you. This relationship is not for you. We, look, the bottom line is nobody has to suffer in a relationship. That's right. You don't have to really go through the pain and live in a painful, miserable, unhappy, long, protracted dying relationship you don't have to if you have tried your best and it hasn't worked say salamu alaikum and go and find somebody else mm. i know it sounds very blasé but it's true allah has not made you and i on this earth to be married and be tied to a miserable relationship but there is a due process and there's due diligence we all have to do first of all look at how big is the problem how big is the issue that you need to forgive and then if you decide that this is a life and death situation for you and it's a non-negotiable, then, then you approach it from that perspective. Otherwise, we will be fighting about lots of little things and which, which makes no sense. So forgiveness has a context and it, it has a weight. It has, has an issue of knowing exactly how big it is, that is it worth for me to even fighting for. If it is, if it's a life and death situation, if it's, if it's cutting into your integrity, if it's cutting into your core, then of course, this is the minimum that you have to do. You have to do let's try it again. Let's try that again. Let's try again. Sorry, my bad, he says. Is it not reasonable to have one Eid day for all the Muslims? I don't know how it is relevant, but since he has tried it three times, I have to be fair. Is it not reasonable to have a set hour of fasting instead of 20 hours during summer and four hours during the winter? If you are vocal about them, there are some who will punish you in the community. I believe those unreasonable practices will harm our entire generation. Should they not be held, held accountable? Sorry, Khairul, not being rude, but this has nothing to do with our conversation of forgiveness. We're talking about forgiveness in a relationship. And you have brought up a theological debate in a discussion, which we can't be having now mm. because we have run out of time, literally. But I'm very grateful to you for actually raising it. Um, it is simply, it is sufficient to say, my brother, I tell you something, at the bottom of it all, at the bottom of it all, you are struggling with submission. That's it. Muslims can be rotten, but that has nothing to do with my submission to Allah. I don't judge Islam by the behavior of Muslims. I judge Muslims by what Allah has said. I submit to Allah, regardless of what people say. If you can submit to Allah, regardless of what people say, you'll be fine.
I will leave it there for now. I'm, I'm not sure about this. But inshallah, we'll, we'll discuss it another time in more detail, the theological aspect of what you've raised. But today we're talking about forgiveness. Last two minutes before we finish, let's talk about our books. Go on, Hannah, talk about your book, if you don't mind. I never mind talking about my book. So my book is called Heart Smart, um, which is what I wrote. It's my journey from my head to my heart. It's packed with neuroscience. It's packed with really interesting stories that I have gone through, my travels, and how I learned the greatest lessons in life so far in my short life. And my book is called 10 Steps to Getting Married and Staying Married. In other words, whether you're married, whether you're single, whether you're looking, whether you're divorced, this book is for you. It is about learning to be married before, after, during, whatever post, whatever situation you are in. So please, my brothers and sisters, buy either of the books. They're available on our website. It's uh, www.barefootinstitute.com forward slash bookstore. If you want counseling, if you want support with your relationship, with your own struggle, with anything that you have, you can email us at info at barefootinstitute.com. And as the COVID-19 restrictions are being lifted, if you are interested in getting married and you want our support and help, we do help and support people when they want to get married. Not matchmaking, but we'll help you to get married, getting you nikah done. You can email us too using our email address, info at barefootinstitute.com. Is there anything else you want to say before we finish? No, I also teach emotional intelligence for couples. So if you're interested, you can always send us an email and I can give you a bit more details about what we do. All our courses that you want to know, inshallah. Brothers and sisters from myself. And, and myself, Henrietta. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum.